Why do we buy certain products or choose certain brands? These are the sort of questions that advertisers have always asked and do you know that there are actually no easy answers for that. However, there is a handy tool that helps companies explore this and many other similar questions like that. And it's called the focus group. Until the 1940s, market research was often quantitative using things like sales figures, customer polls, to track consumption. But this changed during World War II. Sociologist Robert Merton and Paul La La Lazarsofield set out to learn how un unprecedented exposure to wartime propaganda was actually affecting the uh, public. Instead of uh, polling large numbers of people with straightforward questions and um, you know, quantifiable answers, the researchers conducted in-person interviews, sometimes with small groups, engaging them in open discussions. Later, this method was picked up by the advertising industry with the help of consultants like uh, Austrian-born psychologist Ernest Dichter, who first coined the term focus group. This new technique was a type of a qualitative research focused on the nature of people uh, with their perceptions and thoughts. It couldn't tell marketers what percentage of people buy a certain product or brand, but it would tell them more about the people who do, their reasoning for do so, and even the unconscious motivations behind those reasons. Rather than providing def definite conclusions uh, for business and sales, focus groups would be used for exp exploratory research generating new ideas for products and marketing uh, based on deeper understanding of consumer habits. For example, early focus groups found that contrary to popular opinion at the time, wives often had more influence than their husbands when choosing which car to buy. So Chrysler shifted gears by marketing cars directly to women, and Dr. Dicta himself uh, con uh, conducted focus groups for metal to learn what girls wanted in a doll. The result was the Barbie doll. So how does a focus group work? Let's first see that, right? First, companies recruit between 6 and 10 participants according to specific criteria that meets their research objectives. They could be uh, mothers of children between 5 and 7 or teenagers who are planning to buy a new phone in the next 3 months. This is often done through professional recruiters who manage lists of people who have agreed to participate in focus groups for payments or other rewards. During a session, participants are asked to respond to various prompts from the group moderator, like sharing their op uh, opinions on a certain product or their em emotional reactions to an advertisement. They may even be asked to do seemingly unrelated tasks like imagining brands as animals in a zoo, um, the idea is that this can reveal useful information about the participants' feelings that traditional questions might actually not get to. Beyond these basics, uh, many variations are also available. A focus group may have two or more moderators, perhaps taking op opposite sides on a question, or a researcher might be hidden in the focus group unknown to the other participants to see how their answers can be influenced. And the whole process may also be observed by the, re by the researchers through a one-way mirror. But although uh, they can provide valuable insights, like all things, focus groups do have their limitations. And one of the main things uh, that the simple act of observing something uh, can change it, that same lim limitation is there in focus groups. This principle is called the observer interference. The, uh, the answers participants give are likely to be affected by the presence of the researchers. Social pressure from the rest of the group or maybe simply knowing that they are taking part in a focus group can affect their responses. And because researchers often use a, um, a small sample size in a specific setting, it's hard to general, uh, generalize these results. The findings that researchers do uh, from the focus groups are often tested through experiments and data gathering. Uh, those put numbers on questions like uh, how many potential customers there are and what price they'd be willing to buy. This part of the process changes and is constantly changing as the technology is evolving. But focus groups have remained largely uh, the same for decades. Perhaps 
when it comes to the big important questions there is no substitute for uh, people genuinely um, interacting with each other.